Coming up on Harvest, Notre Dame professor Robert Schmuel joins us with a recap of the primaries, and he also talks about his fascinating new project, Ireland's Exiled Children. And the prophet Daniel refused to compromise his convictions in the face of death. Discover what it means to stand for God in a godless culture. And did Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu snub an invite from the White House? Brian Bush is on location in Jerusalem with the details. Don't go anywhere. Harvest begins now. The Harvest Show with Stephen Radlett, Valerie Lowe, Chuck Freebie, and Brian Bush from Israel. The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Harvest Show, your place for information and inspiration. Valerie Lowe here alongside Stefan Radulich and Chuck Freebie. You guys, I went to bed. Every time I tell you I go to bed, something <laughs> else happens with the presidential the race to the White House. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about this. I'm so glad the professor is joining us, Professor Robert Schmuel. He knows all things politics and media. He's not going to like it that I put him on the spot like that. But any surprises to you? Well, there was a surprise for me. I think Bernie yes. Sanders. In Michigan. Yes, mm -hmm. in Michigan. Yeah, that was a surprise, uh, I believe, for a whole lot of people. Yes. I mean, the Polls leading into the Michigan primaries were strongly in favor of uh, Hillary Clinton winning the state, and uh, Bernie took an early lead, but then Hillary bounced back with some of the more populated areas, mm -hmm. and where she was gaining great strides, brought it back to neck and neck. Bernie edged ahead a little bit. I think that's kind of where it finished up, where Bernie uh, was about a point and a half, yes. a one and a half percentage point uh, difference, and uh, wound up squeaking out a win in Michigan. And it probably hurts Hillary Clinton more in perception yes, than I reality so because right. mm -hmm. uh, Michigan, like a lot of the primaries that have been held so far, is a proportional primary. In other words, you get your delegates in proportion to the percentage of votes yeah. that you get. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to get into next week, yes. which will be more fascinating, the winner-take-all primaries mm -hmm. in states like Ohio and, and Florida, Florida and mm -hmm. Illinois and North Carolina. And so if Bernie Sanders had won one of those states where he gets a huge delegate haul as opposed to nothing for Clinton, it would have had a little bit more meaning. As it stands now, and as we'll talk about in the news, and I'm sure with Professor Schmuel, uh, Clinton is more than halfway to the delegate count that she needs mm -hmm. to get the Democratic nomination. And, right. and even with Bernie Sanders' win in Michigan, it still seems to be a, a fait accompli on the Democratic side. Yes, yeah, and on the Republican side, it's still very much, I think, things are up for grabs in a big way. John Kasich, very strong showing in Michigan, mm -hmm. neighboring his home state of Ohio just to the north. Uh, I wasn't expecting him to be that strong in Michigan, honestly. But uh, if he pulls out and should pull out Ohio next week, uh, that kind of changes the landscape a little bit on the Republican side. Well, it's interesting that you say he should pull out Ohio <laughs> because there's a CNN poll that was released this morning yes. that shows that Donald Trump still has a lead in the polls in both Ohio and mm -hmm. Florida. Mm -hmm. and, and if he wins both of those, well, right, right. that's a game changer. Yeah, and uh, Florida, I believe his lead has been diminishing steadily over the yes. last week or so, and Marco mm -hmm. Rubio has been edging up. Well, you know, I... I don't know what to say about Marco Rubio. I'll just, his campaign. I mean, you know, what, what can I say? I, he grew up wanting to be president. Far be it from me to say it's time to get out of the race, you know, or tell or suggest that anyone would do that. But the numbers are clear. So it's, he's going he's gonna to need a prayer, you know, to pull that off. But one person who was missing, and I'm not sure a lot of people even noticed either way, is Ben Carson. And he has said, he told CPAC last week that, he would now go and mobilize Christian voters to get out there and vote. So that's going to be mm -hmm. his new Has thing. he thrown his endorsement behind anyone? You know, I'm waiting to hear endorsements from Jeb Bush. We mm -hmm. don't know who he's going to endorse. <clears throat> ben Carson, um, none of the contenders, well, with the exception of, I think Chris it was Christie. Chris Christie, who mm -hmm. said he is going to, and Stephen, and actor Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll endorse and things Donald that are Trump. not news today. Yeah. 
on the front page, <laughs> Stephen Baldwin's endorsement. Actually, Ben Carson may want to mobilize Christians into helping support Christians based on the story yes. that uh, you've got for us. Yeah, this is a story coming out of Fox News. Beheadings, imprisonment, May mm. the 2015, the worst year for Christian persecution, <laughs> Islamic, it, it, Islamic, Islamic is extremism, and different governments combined to make last year's the worst for Christians, beheadings, mm -hmm. and especially in uh, these Muslim countries and in North Korea. Mm -hmm. So there is a call from Open Door USA. This is based on a report from Open Door. The president, David Curry, says it's no longer just a Christian problem. He says this is a global problem, and he's calling on the United States of America to respond, the president, basically, yes. to respond. Yeah, yeah, there really needs to uh, be a voice uh, championing this, this issue of human rights uh, and specifically with regards to religious persecution and the intensity that's taking place in some parts of our world. I know last year mm -hmm. uh, was a record year and uh, sorry 2014 was a record year and now 2015 is, is gone ahead and super superseded it but uh, doesn't seem like the issues are getting uh, better for sure especially in the Middle East the theater of the Middle East uh, there really needs to be some changes there and hopefully uh, with world powers concentrating and collaborating mm -hmm. to you know, take care of the uh, most radical elements, namely ISIS, uh, maybe that tide will change. And hopefully people will continue to pray for our Christian brethren all around the world who are facing that kind of persecution. I know sometimes we get caught up in what we perceive as persecution of Christians in the United States, whether that's real or imagined. You can take your pick on that, but there's no question that with these beheadings that are going on, the martyrdom of Christians around the world. We need to keep our brethren in prayer and we invite you to call our prayer line at 1-800-365-3732 and offer up your prayers for Christians all around the world. And it is not too late for you, can, for you to join the conversation. You can hit us up on Facebook and Twitter and send your comments directly to the Set of Harvest at aliveatlessee.com. Don't go anywhere, the international news with Truck Freebie is next. Tell people about God's unfailing love. Bless them beyond measure with your gift to help Lassie share the good news that God offers unending joy and eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. To thank you for your compassionate gift, we'll send you a copy of Dr. Lester Summerall's Promises of God, which will give you a promise to rely on every day of the year. Be sure to request yours when you call Lassie Broadcasting at 1-800-365-3732. And now on this Wednesday, March 9, 2016, here's what's happening in your world. Donald Trump won three of the four Republican ballots held yesterday around the country. Trump won primaries in Michigan and Mississippi and a caucus in Hawaii. Ted Cruz took the primary in, in Idaho. Many voters worried about the economy and cited Trump's business experience as one of the reasons they voted for him with Tuesday's wins. Trump leads the Republican field with 446 delegates. He's followed by Senator Ted Cruz with 347. Marco Rubio has 151. Ohio Governor John Kasich has 54. Now, despite an upset win by her rival Bernie Sanders in Michigan, Hillary Clinton has won more than half the delegates needed to take the Democratic nomination. After winning Tuesday in Mississippi, the Clinton win continues the former Secretary of State's strong performance in the South. She is fueled by heavy support from African-American voters. Exit polls also showed black voters overwhelmingly chose Clinton over Sanders. Before Tuesday, Clinton had won primaries in every state that neighbors Mississippi. She's trying to offer a message of unity to counter what she identifies as divisiveness within the Republican Party. Vice President Joe Biden criticized the failure to condemn a Palestinian stabbing spree Wednesday that killed an American student after a Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas's political party posted a statement online praising the stabber. The stabbing spree took place near the sea in the city of Jaffa. Biden was meeting with Israel's former president there. He said his wife and grandchildren were having dinner on the beach not far from where the incident happened. 
For more than five months, there's been a rash of Palestinian attacks on Israeli civilians and security forces. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel condemned Abbas's Fatah party for its statement, calling the stabber a hero and a martyr. Also during the vice president's visit, Iran reportedly test-fired two ballistic missiles, phrase, Israel must be wiped out, written in Hebrew on them. Such phrases have been emblazoned on Iranian missiles before, but this test comes shortly after the implementation of a nuclear deal with world powers, including the United States. Hardliners in Iran's military have fired rockets and missiles despite U.S. objections since this deal, as well as shown underground missile bases on state TV. There is no immediate reaction from Jerusalem nor the U.S. military. These missiles were fired in Iran's eastern Al Bors mountain range and hit a target about 870 miles away in the Sea of Oman. And George Martin, the Beatles' or Bane producer who guided, assisted, and stood aside during the band's swift and historic transformation from a rowdy club act to the cultural revolutionaries they became, has passed away at the age of 90. Martin both witnessed and enabled the extraordinary changes of the Beatles during the 1960s. Besides the Beatles, Martin also worked with Elton John, Celine Dion, and several solo albums by Paul McCartney. McCartney said Martin was like a second father to him. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest from Israel. But next, Notre Dame Professor Robert Schmuel joins us with a recap of the 2016 primaries and a look ahead. We're right back with more Harvest after this. If you are among the thousands who love the teaching of Lester Sumrall, then you should have the two-volume set of The Treasury of Lester Sumrall. Written in Dr. Sumrall's easy-to-understand style, you'll feel like you are getting a Bible school education. There are 732 individual readings, one for each day for two whole years. These beautiful devotionals will also make a wonderful gift for your friends, family, or even your pastor. Order yours today. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. These days, reading your Bible is as easy as opening an app on your phone or doing a quick internet search. But how do people in developing countries hear the gospel when they don't have access to television, the internet, or Christian publications? The answer for many is shortwave radio, technology that's accessible to millions and ideal for broadcasting God's word to areas where missionaries simply cannot reach or aren't permitted to travel. We're so thankful for your support, which has helped continue the work Dr. Lester Sumrall began 70 years ago. Through your gifts and prayers, we continue to transmit God's Word to every major continent in the world through shortwave radio, helping to reach a potential 20 million homes through this powerful technology. Through the support of friends like you, the good news of Jesus continues to be heard by many living in the most difficult to reach corners of the globe. And we thank you. He sits in the Annenberg Joyce Chair of the American Studies Department. Bob Schmuel, a frequent contributor here on The Harvest Show. He was with us a few weeks ago to give us a primer for the Iowa presidential primaries. He's here a few weeks later to help alleviate our confusion that has set in since then. Uh, <laughs> Chuck, here. thanks for not showing what I might have said uh, back then, because <laughs> everything has changed since well, then. Well, it certainly has, and, and let me take a vocabulary lesson from you here. The term Republican establishment is tossed around a lot a bit, 
And I'm not exactly sure who these people are, but I do know one thing. They don't seem to have the pulse of the American people because every candidate they support doesn't win. The establishment might be referred to as the gang that can't shoot straight. And all one has to do is look at the last week or so in this campaign. You had Mitt Romney uh, giving his speech against uh, Donald Trump. You had a number of them meeting uh, in secret over the uh, weekend. Um, timing is everything in politics. And certainly the Republican establishment couldn't be worse at timing. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they wanted to do anything in relation to uh, Donald Trump, they should have started two months ago or three months ago. But all we uh, heard at that point is, oh, he's going to implode. He's not going to go anywhere. Right. Once the primaries get going, the American public will speak and they will reject him. Well, the American public is speaking and they are not rejecting him. Who they are rejecting would be the candidates who represent the Republican establishment. Absolutely. And um, now we're in the situation where uh, I think it's um, fair to say that the only person who really has a shot uh, at some success would be John Kasich from uh, wow. Ohio. I, I can't see it with uh, Marco Rubio in Florida. You look at those numbers, you look at what's happened to his campaign. Uh, Ted Cruz is an interesting uh, case study in the sense that um, someone once referred to him as the insider's outsider. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he's in the United States Senate, but not a single senator has endorsed him at this point. He is known, and it's certainly on tape and easily available, he is on the floor of the United States Senate, referred to the leader, Mitch McConnell, as a liar. Well, uh, those kinds of statements don't make you out to be a friend of, of those <laughs> with whom you're serving. Mm -hmm. So that um, the reason I mention it is you take Donald Trump and you add on Ted Cruz, both of them are counter to the Republican right. establishment. Mm -hmm. And that's where they are going into uh, next Tuesday's uh, primaries. Prof Professor Shmuel, let's make, uh, switch over to the Democratic side. I mean, you know, Hillary has a, she's doing okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like she's going to be the nominee. Um, but why is she struggling? I mean, Bernie Sanders, he's, he's been in politics for years, and so has Hillary Clinton. So this is not so much about establishment, but it, there is certainly this wave of voters who are going against, especially younger voters. Um, why is that? Uh, well, uh, I heard an interesting interpretation recently, which is that young people are not rallying behind uh, Hillary Clinton because uh, she reminds the young people of their mother. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, now, I love my mother, and I'm sure all three of you did. And, and but you don't want her to be president of the right, United States. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, quips aside, there would be uh, a message behind Sanders. Mm -hmm. And um, I am struck, I'm struck by a number of things. One would be that this is the first time he's really declared as a Democrat. You know, he's been right. an independent, independent yes. and yeah. known as a socialist. Okay, that's number one. Uh, but number two, he keeps going around the countryside talking about a political revolution. And uh, it used to be not so many years ago, you, you didn't use a word like liberal. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you sort of you sort of cushioned it by saying so and so is a progressive right. or something. Liberal, bad word. Political revolution isn't, uh, you know, a verboten term uh, mm -hmm. at this particular point. What he is doing is he's tapping in to many of the feelings that Donald Trump is taking right. advantage yeah. of. Mm -hmm. And um, what's so interesting to me is that uh, should Hillary Clinton, as I think will be the case, become the nominee, and should Donald Trump become the nominee. 
that will be so interesting because other than being flawed candidates from the state of New York, um, they are absolutely polar opposites. Mm -hmm. I mean, one is your consummate insider, Hillary Clinton. He is the consummate uh, uh, outsider. Uh, and you just go down the line mm -hmm. in terms of uh, government experience, no government mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it, it's very interesting that it's breaking down uh, that way. My guess is that uh, Sanders will be uh, a factor uh, going into the rest of the spring uh, in a number of states. Um, and one of the things that will keep him uh, going would be the uh, number of contributions mm -hmm. that he's receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting back to, to what you mentioned about John Kasich as a, a possible yeah. uh, alternative to Donald Trump as maybe a potential uh, nominee, uh, is there a pathway for that other than a brokered convention? Uh, I, th I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't see it in the numbers. Uh, what he would have to do is have a very strong showing next week, mm -hmm. next Tuesday, in Ohio, mm -hmm. his home state. And he would have to take all of the delegates there. Mm -hmm. And he'd have to do it in such a way that uh, the public begins to notice him in a much sharper way. Mm -hmm. and. Basically, what he would be doing is creating his position to go to Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, my goodness, yeah. his mm -hmm. home, uh, mm -hmm. you know, his home area, his home state, uh, and try to work something out mm -hmm. there. And the only way that that works is if uh, Donald Trump does not get the required uh, number of delegates for that right. first vote. Right. Let me uh, yeah. ask a quick follow-up on Kasich. Uh, he was on record just a week or so ago saying that he would not accept a, uh, a position as vice president if Donald Trump were to tap him on the shoulder for that. Did, were you surprised by it? I was, because um, you never know what uh, people will say, and you never know if they might change. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, there was talk this morning on the various networks that maybe Marco Rubio, young, Hispanic, involved in this might emerge as a potential running mate. Mm -hmm. I think that that would come as a great surprise to Chris Christie, mm -hmm. who, uh, <laughs> you know, who is standing behind uh, Donald Trump at almost every photo op that I've seen lately. L look, uh, looking almost know. like a hostage at times, yes, but nevertheless. Yes, uh, yes, someone said that if you see him blink three <laughs> times quickly, it's Morse, uh, it's Morse, code. It's Morse code for uh, please release me, uh, let me go. Um, Let me ask you about issues because issues. There's, this, is, <laughs> this is not an election about issues, and, and clearly it's not because here's here's the thing that really befuddles me: neither Trump nor Clinton is doing very well when it comes to the question of who do you trust. Neither one of them can get fifty percent in that, and yet they're winning the votes. And you talked about the possibility of a Trump-Clinton election as being the ultimate insider versus the ultimate outsider, but then it's really the ultimate lesser of two evils argument, isn't it? Yeah, uh, but we're still left with evil uh, right. in that situation. And uh, I just, the ABC Washington Post poll that came out just yesterday puts Donald Trump ahead of uh, Ted Cruz by nine points. Uh, honest and Trump, uh, trustworthy, uh, Trump, 45% say that, so not reaching the halfway point. Mm -hmm. Understands our problems, 44%. Has the right experience, 42%. Right personality, 43%. Hmm. Overall, his uh, favorable uh, rating is 46%, uh, his unfavorable is 52 These are numbers. Wow. Uh, you know, that to me are stunning. Yeah. And you see the same thing with, uh, with Hillary Clinton and uh, whether or not she would be uh, considered uh, honest and trustworthy by the uh, mm -hmm. voters. Um, this gets into something that 
probably we don't have time to uh, discuss right now. But several years ago, I went around the countryside saying that uh, American politics were at a breaking point. Mm. I think we're there. It would and appear. I think the people are saying that in the votes that they cast during these primaries and caucuses. Well, we may be headed towards a political revolution in the United States. There was certainly a revolution a hundred years ago in Ireland that started up. And the professor, who would make a great party guest because he can talk about a myriad of topics, <laughs> will be here to talk about his new book about Ireland and that revolution from a hundred years ago. And that comes your way next here on Harvest. Heal the sick, mend broken relationships, reach the lost with the love of Christ. Do all of that and more when you support LaCie Broadcasting Prayer Line. Prayer Line is a channel of God's love, reaching more than 10,000 people every month. Your gift today will help keep Prayer Line available for free 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go to your phones right now and call 1-800-365-3732. Give now and keep Prayer Line going strong. Do you sometimes wonder what life would be like if you had the energy to do those extra things you want to do but just can't? Maybe it's to go for a walk after dinner or spend your Saturdays playing with your kids. If you're tired all the time and have decided that you just always will be, guess what? You don't have to be. With Mineral Concentrate from Making Healthy Choices, this fulvic acid electrolyte mineral formula promotes maximum cell function while sparking your body's electrical conductivity. What does that mean? Well, most people say they've never felt better. The best part is it's only $29.95. And if you call now, we'll even pay to ship it to you. So dial 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. This electrolyte formula promotes dependable, solid energy day in and day out. So call the number on the screen. Do it for your spouse, your kids, your friends, and most of all, do it for you. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. It's time for life. In Uganda, thousands of children pour across the border, fleeing the terror and violence taking place in South Sudan. Many have nothing but the ragged clothes they wear. They're weak from hunger and struggle to survive. Today, you have an opportunity to change the life of one of these refugee children from Sudan. For just $72, you can provide food, comfort, and security for a child for an entire year. $144 will take away the pain of hunger and introduce two children to the joy of full life that comes from knowing the love of Jesus. Please call 1-877-769-9270 today or visit feedthehungry.org. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 to help a child know how good a full life feels. It was Easter week a hundred years ago when there was quite the uprising in Ireland that had the revolution there that led to Ireland's independence. And Professor Bob Schmuel, not only an expert on politics, but has made himself into an expert on America and the Easter Rising has done a ton of research about Ireland's exiled children. I was fascinated, Bob, to read that at the time of this uprising, there were more Irish in America than there were in Ireland, and, and really that's why the people in Ireland were looking to America for help at that time. Um, it's a interesting, I would argue it's a uh, defining moment not only in Irish history, but also in Irish-American history. And we tend to forget how many Irish uh, came over, uh, largely uh, in the middle of the 19th century because of the famine. Mm -hmm. And they were the poorest of the poor at that point. But by 1914, 15, 16, many of them had been quite successful in America. Um, economically, they were making it. Uh, politically, they were making it. And they kept looking back across the Atlantic to their previous homeland. In the case of some, they were first generation or second or third. Um, 
And what you see is that uh, so many of them contributed to the cause that ultimately led to the Easter Rising. Mm. Uh, and uh, Americans donated about $100,000 and compute that in today's currency, and it, it comes to about $2.5 million. Uh, Americans helped to buy the arms. Americans helped to uh, spread the word through publications about what was afoot in Ireland. Um, and then, interestingly enough, the proclamation, which sets forth the view that there should be an Irish Republic there's only one other country that's mentioned on it besides Ireland. And the phrase, supported by her exiled children in America. Mm -hmm. So even at that point, they are looking at America and saying, you have supported us. There were seven leaders who signed the proclamation. Five of them had spent time in the United States. One of them was a naturalized American citizen. You say that there are four key players in this mm -hmm. uh, in the Easter Rising. Can you kind of talk about them? Especially one of them was the President of the United States. By by key players, they would be, in my view, okay. uh, important. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, the Irish would have a different uh, vantage point. Uh, but I was looking uh, exclusively at the American connections, the American angle. Uh, one of them, indeed, was uh, Woodrow Wilson, who in 1912 uh, ran for the presidency in a, in a weird sort of uh, election that had the incumbent president, William Howard Taft, running as well as a former president, Theodore Roosevelt. And Woodrow Wilson is the Democrat who emerges because of the divided vote on the, uh, the other side. Um, and the reason I mention that is that in 1912, he was very explicit in seeking the support of Irish America. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, Irish America, a strong constituency for the Democratic Party. Um, so he is embracing them. He is saying, my father had uh, parents who came from uh, Ireland, and I am Irish. Irish blood flows in my veins. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, fast forward to 1916 and the Easter Rising. And what happened was the Rising lasted about six days. But then there was a period of executions where they uh, literally shot firing squads, um, the leaders of the rebellion. But Woodrow Wilson didn't do anything. His secretary, what we would call chief of staff, sent out uh, messages saying that the president is concerned, the president <laughs> is involved, the president is this. But as I show in the book, and I went through the Wilson papers and the Library of Congress, um, some of the statements that are attributed to him were definitely ghosted. Mm. And I'm not sure that he even saw them. Uh, and uh, later on, it becomes even more important because there's the Paris Peace Conference and Irish America wants him to bring up the future of Ireland, and he refuses. Now, there's a documentary out with the book. And mm -hmm. you, Liam Neeson participated in the documentary. In fact, even came to the Notre Dame campus as part of that. Talk about that documentary, where people might be able to see it. And I understand there's a local tie-in here in the South Bend area as well. The, um, the documentary... Uh, is produced by Notre Dame, the Keogh Naughton Institute for Irish Studies. And it's been a five or six year project. And uh, what they did is they decided to devote three hours, three separate hours, to the, the sort of beginning of the rising and the planning of it and then the rising itself and then the aftermath. And they went all over the world, quite frankly, in uh, interviewing uh, people. And it is going to be on PBS across mm -hmm. the United States uh, beginning uh, later this month and then into uh, April. I think something like 200 stations have already wow. uh, picked it up. 
And um, it was a chance for Notre Dame to look at the Easter uh, Rising, the Irish Rebellion, um, in a comprehensive way. And um, it's a analytical, historical, I think a very fair assessment of the meaning and impact that well, it had. You would expect nothing less out of the fighting Irish after all. <laughs> the book is entitled Ireland's Exiled Children, America and the Easter Rising. You can't get it right now, but you can pre-order it on Amazon and at your favorite bookstore as well. We certainly appreciate Bob Schmuel spending some time with us today to talk about a variety of things and Boy, you're going to be a world traveler here coming up. New York, Ireland, the whole bit. But we'll always think of the Harvest Show. As well, well you should. You. <laughs> to connect with Professor Schmuel, go to www.nd.edu. If you can't remember that, you can find a link at our website at harvest-tv.com. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance has today's connections. But up next, Brian Bush joins us from Israel with the latest from the Middle East as the Harvest Show rolls on after this. In the last 15 years, friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles to anyone who requests a copy through our Spread the Word ministry. God has certainly been working powerfully through your support. The Book of Romans says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's why we're so thankful for your partnership to help us take the best news of all time to more of those who are desperate to hear it. It costs just $5 to send a Bible to someone hungry to read it in Africa, South America, or many other places around the globe. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Somrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. As promised, Brian Bush joins us today with news from the land of Israel and the region of the Middle East. And Brian, to start off with sad news about an American student who was killed in a terror attack there in Israel. What's the reaction been? Well, it's one of grief. Uh, and there were 13 wounded across the country in a series of attacks that did see one American die as a result of his wounds from the attacker who knifed him. Today, we've had several attacks this in the morning hours. Um, the assailant at yesterday's assault uh, was on a popular boardwalk and managed to wound several people in the attack before he was killed by police. This particular attack in Jaffa on the coast coincided with U.S. Vice President Joe Biden's visit, who was in the general area for a meeting with former Prime Minister and President of Israel, Israel's Shimon Peres. Uh, at this point, it is not believed that the American was specifically targeted. Um, he was a student who was here with his university uh, on an entrepreneur uh, uh, course, and he was unfortunately in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. Stefan? Uh, Brian, noticed on your Facebook blog yesterday, you mentioned Vice President Biden's trip to Israel. The last time he was there, I believe it caused a heavily strained relationship between Israel and the United States, correct? Yeah, you are referring to the settlement expansions Israel undertook while Mr. Biden was specifically mm -hmm. here to promote and advance in the peace efforts between Israel and the Palestinians at that time. Um, yeah, it was big, Stefan. Uh, but now, this time around, Vice President Biden is visiting the region reportedly to check in with Arab leaders on the issues related to stability in the Middle East as it grapples with growing insurgency by Islamic extremists and, of course, Islamic State itself and the regional crisis in Yemen that is drawing players of the region 
there in Yemen fighting against each other. Uh, and let's not forget, uh, this is another visit post nuclear deal with Iran, something that Israel was terribly opposed to. Stefan? Uh, Brian, how does the terror event in conjunction with the vice president's actually uh, being there on the ground in Israel change the dynamic and the agenda uh, of the visit? Well, it, it certainly does in terms of press discussions and, uh, and, and the reactions, the public statements that are made. Um, but as far as the agenda and everything like that, no, Mr. Biden is staying at the hotel behind me. Um, he will keep to the same agenda that has been scheduled for him. Uh, Israel is hammering home the idea that its citizens are senselessly targeted by random terror acts. And we've heard Vice President Biden reinforce that. But in terms of the two states' expectation and agendas, no, uh, it doesn't really have an effect on things. Mr. Biden will be discussing uh, a potential push for peace that President Obama reportedly is considering uh, before his uh, term in office will expire, um, as well as Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu's apparent dissatisfaction of upcoming proposed U.S. military aid to Israel. Stefan? Brian, that might uh, be an answer to what many are looking for as to why Prime Minister Netanyahu canceled his visit to Washington. Is, is that what prompted that decision? Well, it could be, Stefan. Uh, we haven't had a clear indicator. Um, you know, here in Israel, it's all about relations and reactions. Now, Prime Minister Netanyahu is worried about the potential reaction that may come if he were to visit America. He doesn't want to be seen as, what he says, meddling in the U.S. political affairs. This after what happened to him in 2012 with his very public endorsement of Mitt Romney uh, when he was trying to run for president. And then the fallout that occurred for Mr. Netanyahu both in America and here in Israel. But he is also worried about being boxed in here in Israel politically. Uh, politically right now, he is facing several crises against his premiership. There are a lot of politicians who believe that he's been Israel's prime minister too long, and they are working against him. They are tunneling against him. And if he were to go ahead and visit America, uh, when Mr. Obama is working potentially together with the UN to create something related to the peace efforts with the Palestinians, then if it backfires on the premier, here in Israel, he's going to be seen as weak. He's going to be portrayed as ineffective and one who damages relationships with Israel's top and foremost ally in the world. Stefan? Brian, thank you so much for your commentary. Always look forward to what you have to add to the Harvest Show here. And a reminder to our friends watching today that Brian gives us exclusive content from Israel, but it's only available on the Harvest Show Facebook page. So go there, like us, and you can get access to his video logs as well as other content from Brian Bush in Israel. Coming up next here on the Harvest Program, Pastor Mark Lance with part two of his teaching series, Living a Life Bigger Than You. series this week that I've entitled Living a Life That is Bigger Than You. And we're using the Old Testament character of Daniel, a, a phenomenal character, a man that lived with purpose in a land that was foreign, the land of Babylon. He's an exile. He's a stranger. He's a foreigner. Now, yesterday I told you that living life with purpose gives you a sense of clarity. Daniel did not conform to the pressure of the Babylonians to change who he was. Now, today I want to talk to you about living with purpose gives you a sense of conviction. I want you to go with me to the book of Daniel, chapter number one, verse number eight, where the Bible said that Daniel purposed in his heart or that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. 
Now here's an opportunity that Daniel and his friends are given to eat the meat and to drink the wine of the king. Now this was not just any meat. There was a stark difference between the meat that royalty ate and the meat that the common man ate. This was the meat that was the finest cut. It was the finest sirloin, if I may say so. This was the finest wine, a meal that is prepared by the finest culinary experts of Babylon. But now Daniel has a choice because you see, in and of itself, it would not have been wrong for him to eat meat. Meat was not the problem. The problem was, well, twofold. It was a spiritual problem. Number one, the meat did not fit the dietary laws that God had given the Hebrew people. It was not kosher for him to eat this kind of a meal. But secondly, and probably most importantly, this meat had been offered to Babylonian idols, to false gods as a prayer, as a sacrifice. So for Daniel to eat of this meat, he would have broken his dietary law. And number two, he would have been eating meat that was offered as a sacrifice to false gods. You see, this is the point at which Daniel had to stay true to his conviction. Can I tell you today that any person that's ever done anything great for God has always had a set of convictions that have guided them, a set of values that goes beyond just what's written on paper and somehow gets deep inside of their heart. And today you're watching and I want you to know the only way that you're going to live a life that is bigger than you is when you get a set of convictions that you are not willing to compromise for anything or for anybody. You are going to live a life according to the values that God has given to you. Now, understand, Daniel had to make this decision, and the decision was, rather than meat, I want you to give me lentils. I want you to give me water. I want you to test me. Now, this is a real test because the reason that the Babylonians were giving them meat is because these individuals needed to be strong. They needed to be healthy. Go back to Daniel chapter number 1 and look with me in verse number 12. The Bible said, prove thy servants, prove us 10 days, give us pulse to eat and water to drink, and then let our countenance be looked on before thee and the countenance of the children to, that, that eat the portion of the king's meat as thou seest, deal with thy servants. You see, Daniel could have lost his life. And not only him, but the prince of the eunuchs, the man that oversaw Daniel, he also could have lost his life. In fact, look in verse number 12 of our text. He said in verse, I'm sorry, verse 10, the prince of the eunuchs said, I fear my Lord, the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. Why he should see your face is worse than the children which are of your sort. Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. You see, not only could Daniel have lost his life, but the one overseeing him would have lost his life as well. But you see, Daniel had such a deep conviction that he knew when he lived life according to convictions, God would take care of him. You see, my friend, today the Lord is bringing you to a position where your convictions and your values, they will be tested. Believe me, they will be put to the test. But when you live life according to convictions, God will take care of you. Because you see, on the other side of principles is a promise. And the promise is that no matter what, your convictions are worth living out. Never sacrifice the immediate. Never sacrifice the convictions on the altar of the immediate. Live life according to your principles, your values, and when you do so, you will be living a life that is bigger than you. Listen, my friend, the days ahead of you are great, but it requires conviction. Live it today. Don't ever give it up and walk into the blessing of God as you live a life that is bigger than you.
Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he established Lissy Broadcasting. The ministry today reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, shortwave satellites, free Bibles, and prayer lines. But we need your help. Will you join Partners in Faith by giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more? Give today by calling 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lissy.com. Since 2000, Live from Studio B has become an intimate venue for over 250 of today's most recognizable and up-and-coming Christian artists. Oh God, and you have made me new. And Visit livefromstudioB.com for performance schedules along with archive shows ready to be streamed. Live from Studio B, up close and personal with your favorite Christian artists. You know, there are so few things in this world that you can count on anymore, especially when it comes to our financial future and planning for retirement. We live in a dynamic world defined by change, but when it comes to securing our retirement income, we want stability, not uncertainty. And that's why I consistently talk about charitable gift annuities. A gift annuity provides a safe and steady income stream which is fixed for life, and you are investing into changing lives for Jesus Christ at the same time. If you are over 49 and a half years of age and you have at least $10,000 in a savings account or CD, call us today. Let us show you how you can have at least one form of retirement income that you can count on. When you lay up your treasure in heaven, you can count on it being there waiting for you. So call us today and let us help you have a secure income for the rest of your life.
To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's lesea.com. And welcome back to The Harvest Show. Now let's check in with Pastor Charles, who is standing by in the International Prayer Line. What do you have for us, Pastor? Hey, we got some prayer requests in, Val, from those ones who are coming alongside of us on a monthly basis, those ones that we choose to call monthly partners in faith. They're supporting us here at Prayer Line and Lacey Broadcasting financially. For instance, we have Jay. Jay says that I'm writing this prayer request that you might pray in agreement with me that my brother be healed. He says cancer has invaded his body and we believe God can heal him. And then we have Renee. Renee says, please pray for God's mercy and grace for this certain situation that I'm faced with. She says, he knows what it is and I'm asking for agreement with you that his will be done. And then finally, we have Rosita. Rosita says that please keep me in your prayers as I reach out to the Lord to bless me with more seed to guess what? To sow into the ministry there at La Cie. <laughs> so, hey, I'm telling you what, she couldn't pick a better place to sow that seed. Indeed, at Pastor Charles, we just have about a minute left. Would okay. you pray for us? Sure, sure. Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord God, for those ones, Lord God, who are dealing with situations that are beyond their control. We realize, Lord God, that you are the one who has the answer to them all. We're asking you, Lord, to touch them in a mighty way. Heal their bodies, deliver their souls, Lord God, and even render seed unto them that they might be sowers. Father, you told us in your word that you give seed to the sower, and they're asking you, Lord God, that since they're sowers, give them seed. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. It's in the name of Jesus yes. that we pray. Thank you so much, Pastor Charles. If you need prayer, that number is 1-800-365-3732. We have some awesome volunteers and intercessors who are standing by waiting to pray for you and to take your praise reports. We are so glad for the opportunity to come into your home every day to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, for your gift of any amount, we'll send you Promises of God by Dr. Lester Summerall. But it starts by calling 1-800-365-3732. Thank you for joining us here today, and we will see you tomorrow on Harvest. Tell people about God's unfailing love. Bless them beyond measure with your gift to help Lassie share the good news that God offers unending joy and eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. To thank you for your compassionate gift, we'll send you a copy of Dr. Lester Summerall's Promises of God, which will give you a promise to rely on every day of the year. Be sure to request yours when you call Lassie Broadcasting at 1-800-365-3732.